This is Daryl W. Perry, host of Free Talk Live. This November, I'll be running in the world's biggest and most popular marathon, the New York City Marathon. And I've accepted a spot on Team Innocence Project because I'm a passionate supporter of their work. Since 1989, 353 people in the United States have been exonerated by DNA testing, including 38 who pled guilty to crimes they did not commit, and 20 of whom served time on death row. The Innocence Project provided direct representation or critical assistance in 180 of these cases. With your help, the Innocence Project can help even more people who have been wrongly convicted. As part of Team Innocence Project, I am raising awareness about wrongful convictions and raising funds to help free the innocent. I've already paid the race registration fees. However, to secure my spot on Team Innocence Project in the New York City Marathon, I need to raise $3,500 by November 1st. You can support the Innocence Project and help me secure my race entry by going to run.freetalklive.com. It's just like the, like the insanity of government, man. It's just, it really is. I, I don't know how anybody can deal with this type of shit on a regular basis or even not just have to deal with this every once in a while and not be against the idea of government. (laughs) I really don't get that. We are just some modern day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery, statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 148th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a Bipcot new government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at Bipcot.org. So we're back. I am Jeremy, joined again this week by Andre and Shane. What's up, guys? What's going on, boss? Dave is uh, Dave's not here again this week, which is fine because I mean Shane's here, and that's Dave's not here, man. Much much more pleasurable, <laughs> p- pleasurable. So two weeks. Well, actually, actually for for our listeners, this will be what four, f- three weeks in a row now without Dave for them. Because yeah, the, there was the episode with just Mance Raider and I, and then last week was the three of us, and now this week is the three of us. So yeah, a long time without Dave. Let's see if the numbers start improving. I wonder. And anyway, I'm, I'm just kidding. We we love you, Dave. Uh, Sorry, you're, you know, he's, he's busy with farming, so we'll, get, we'll give him a pass because he's out there doing, which is something I hope to be doing soon. So anyway, we're back, and I think this week we were going to discuss, we don't do, we ha- at least we haven't done like news stories per se or, you know, things going on, current events, stuff like that in a while. We usually try to stay away from that because, well, who wants to talk about that pre- depressing stuff? But uh, this particular story, I actually heard about this one briefly the other day, but it actually got posted. Uh, Michael W. Dean from the Freedom Fiends actually posted it today saying that anybody who has a podcast, this is you know a good story to talk about this week if uh, you haven't already done your show. And then, of course, he tagged me in it. And I was like, ah, you know what? If we're going to talk about anything, uh, why not? So, yeah, the, the story is basically, I don't even remember the one that he sent me. I think it was from the, the Times uh, maybe, or maybe the New York Post, one of the two. One, but uh, basically, old Trumpy Kins is out there and uh, apparently he's been setting off a whole bunch of tweets. He's all mad at Jeff Bezos and Amazon uh, trying to find ways to, to claim that they are, uh, you know, basically original. At first, I saw him made, I, th- I think he's made some comment about the fact that Amazon doesn't pay enough taxes, which if that's actually true, it was very interesting to me because I could have swore on the campaign trail there was the quote from Trump claiming that he didn't pay he didn't pay taxes and that it was because he was smart. Right. Uh, th- am I misremembering that or he, that did actually no, that's happen? Accurate. Right? Yeah. Okay. No, he yes. said that. He said that. Okay. So yeah, which which I applauded him for at the time, and I was like, damn right, man, that's a smart move. Yeah, T- you know, theft evasion is is a, is a smart move in my opinion. So I was like, yeah, Trump. Um, so for him to turn around and attack. Amazon. Now, of course, you dig deeper into the story and there's very conflicting in, in, uh, in, uh, interest because, of course, now Bezo, Jeff Bezos, the guy who created Amazon, uh, now owns the Washington Post. 
And they are, of course, very, very critical of, of old Trumpy Kins. So he's got an axe to grind with him there. And apparently there's been issues with the two of these guys in the past. But now his latest thing is he's out there. Uh, he, he said a series of tweets about it, which, of course, Trump is famous for, you know, the, the tweeting president. And he uh, and, and, and there's been stories about it going around that he's claiming that the that Amazon is basically costing the USPS, the U.S. Postal Service, you know, millions of dollars by basically taking advantage of them because these days the USPS delivers for Amazon. <laughs> and. You know, the first thing I thought of, and I don't know, I mean, I'm, I'm, maybe you guys the same thing. The first thing I thought of was like, wait a minute, hasn't the USPS been losing money for decades anyway? <laughs> like, is he right. really trying to pin the blame on Amazon and expecting people to go, oh my God, Amazon ruined everything. <laughs> like, they have been, right? They've been, I mean, Shane, we were talking before the show, you were saying something about yeah. your mom, right? My mom worked for the post office for decades, and uh, she told me how they've been losing money all along. I don't think they've ever had a year where they actually made money, and so they just keep losing money left and right. And of course, you know, being a government agency, the government's going to bail them out regardless. But I think, and she did also mention the fact that uh, their volume has been decreasing most of the, you know, every year pretty much ever since the invention of like email and stuff, people have been using the post office a lot less. So the way I look at it is that, you know, this is a voluntary contract arranged between Amazon and the post office and the post office accepted what may have been a bad deal for them, but it's not the first time they've done that sort of thing. And this actually gives them something to do because they really don't have the kind of volume that they used to. So Amazon actually gives them some volume uh, you know, to, to actually deliver, you know, and uh, it seems like they were going to lose money anyway, but uh, at least now, you know, they have something to do while they're losing money. Well, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you mentioned at the beginning of that, you know, be, uh, better than being a government agency. And of course, that's one of the one of the things that often gets thrown around because technically they're supposed to be not, you know, actually, you know, in the same way, the Federal Reserve is not supposed to be a government agency. They're supposed to be separate. But of course, it, it's not the way that works in reality. And you're right. They do get bailed out. But it does mention that in that article, the fact that if you actually look at the numbers, yes, the 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 what should we call it the load the workload for postal workers has been going down, uh, ex, you know, exponentially since uh, the the advent of the uh, of the internet and email, and even more so once you know i mean when when dhl originally uh was trying to compete uh heavy again um i think they've kind of dis i don't see much of them anymore i think they've disappeared again it's back to just being fedex and ups but like when there was even more competition for that type of stuff like you started to see the hit to there where people were use you know were using for packages they were using the post office less because they were getting things faster and more reliably from the private uh from the private industry so yeah, they definitely have been losing num money forever. Uh, I, I don't. I, I've heard that too. The fact, you know, the possibility that they've never actually had a positive year. Um, but I, I, I've never actually verified that. But it seems likely based on how they run everything else. Uh, the one thing that was mentioned in the article is the spokesperson for the post office did claim that the the deal they made with Amazon while certain people may claim it's not ideal. Cause apparently there was uh, complaints from people at FedEx and, and, um, and UPS, I think about the fact that the, that there was such this, this horrible deal that would, you know, that they were basically undercutting everybody. And that's why I, Amazon went with it, them instead. Um, but the spokesperson for the, for the USPS claims that every deal by law, apparently allegedly has to actually make a profit, for the USPS, like there's actually a law or regulation written that any deal they make with a third party like this, they actually have to profit from. And but he can make that claim just like Trump can keep going out there and claiming over and over again that this is definitely a horrible deal and Amazon's ripping them off. But nobody can know for sure because the other interesting thing about the story, this is another thing I didn't know because uh, I don't pay enough attention to these things, but apparently the USPS is, is supposed to be, you know, for transparency reasons, are supposed to release all of their, you know, basically all their documents with the exception 
of deals they make with private companies like Amazon in this in mm. this particular nature. So these the deals of the, the the financials are not just disclosed for this deal. Nobody nobody knows what they are outside of the USPS and Amazon. And I'm sure there's some people in the government somewhere that know something, but it's not allowed it's not allowed to be out open to the public and nobody else is, you know, supposed to be able to see it. So these people can keep going back and forth and making these claims, but nobody's actually going to know what the real truth is other than looking at the facts, the, you know, the facts of the case that, well, the USPS has definitely lost money every single year. <laughs> and, you know, they have been taking huge hits because of things like email and private companies coming up with better, quicker solutions, uh, sometimes cheaper. Although I know the USPS has had to cut their, uh, at least for packages and stuff. I did find that out a couple of times when I ended up shipping stuff that it, it is still cheaper. Uh, although there's, you know, not always a guarantee of it showing up <laughs> um, mm. through the USPS. But yeah, man, yeah. It, the whole thing's just a mess. It, it just, it's just funny. And like I said, that's the only reason I, I was, I said, eh, if we're going to talk about a current event, why not this one? Because it's, it's so filled with like, just like ever, like it's a microcosm of everything that's going on right now. As far as I can tell, with the, the limited amount that I pay attention, you know, the the bombacity of Trump mixed with the incompetency and inefficiency of government um, and uh, and the deleterious effects of the the corp the corporate regulatory structure that creates that helps create the monopolies like Amazon that everybody wants to hate so badly. It's like, well, you know, the government pretty much set them up to do stuff like this. So <laughs> why wouldn't they take advantage of it? You know, so it's got pretty much everything as far as I'm concerned. I don't know. We haven't heard from Andre much, though. What about what do you think about all this, Andre? I honestly don't care. I really don't. <laughs> well, thank I mean, you. For I, your I, if you want, if you want an honest appraisal of the situation, I really don't give. A shit. And when it, when it comes right, down, it, this is just a this is just a, it's, it's real. This is as America like it's key theater. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I know it is. It's just, I think it's funny because so many people are getting up in arms, but you know, most people, if they know anything about it, like probably don't realize the numbers we're throwing around or the fact that, you know, this is all, you know, basically because, well, government claims monopolies on this stuff. And even in a situation where, like I said before, that the, the USPS is supposed to be some sort of weird amalgam, like some kind of non-government, but government agency all at the same time. I forget the exact specifics of it, but you know, that's, that's what the government did. They put that in place when they ran Spooner out of business back in the, what was that? The 1860s, 70s. When was the American layer? Was I forget? Was it pre or post civil war? I think it was post, wasn't it? The American mail it was post civil war. Yeah, yeah, it was post civil war. So yeah, eighteen seventies or so. When they well, they have they have some some weird sort of uh, like non competition thing against effects uh, and USPS. We can't you know they can't undercut either of them because it would unfairly compete with them or some bullshit. Um, so I mean, there's th there's all sorts of stupidity that goes on with the the US service. And the fact that Amazon has managed to find a way to work that to their advantage. I mean, hey, whatever, cool, good for them, I guess. Well, I don't know. I still wish I didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> well, uh, in that respect, yeah, I I, I agree. But I, I, you know, a Amazon got a good deal out of this. It appears I I'm a I, I was a fan of it. I mean, when when I started getting packages on Sundays from Amazon, I was stoked, man. Like it took me a time or two to realize it was my mail guy that was delivering it to me. And that's when yeah, I yeah yeah I had that same experience uh, uh, very recently here. I got something. It was like, 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 oh, oh, oh what? How's the social service run shit on Sundays? They don't run shit on Sundays. You're it's nonsense. You, you got to hit, hit, hit your bump stuff over there. You're, uh, you're buffering quite a bit over there, Andre. I don't know. Uh, All right, hang on a second. Maybe it's your bad. Yeah, maybe you got some bad internets tonight. You did mention the reliability. Uh, maybe so. Maybe so. Office. And it uh, reminds me so, of our, uh, our local mail carrier. Um, he's, well, I don't know if it's a he or she, but they have been like ever since I moved from the apartment next door, they've continued to deliver my mail to the apartment next door. And now that I live in this apartment, um, I also get mail from other streets with the same number address. So like um, I live at a, a, a building that's uh, number 27, but I also get um, mail for 
number 27 from a block or two away. And the last time I tried to call them and explain that they're delivering mail for other streets, they said, oh, well, you're going to have to come in and bring that mail and drop it off at the post office. And it just so happened to be like I wasn't able to make it down there that day. And it was probably a Friday. So I would have had to wait over the weekend until they opened again. So I just went and dropped it off in their mailbox myself. It was only one block away, actually closer than the post office itself. But they still continue to do that. And uh, it's like, you know, what do you, what do you do in that situation? I don't want to have to go back down to the post office every time they deliver someone else's mail. Oh, I don't. Well, I mean, I get, I mean, that happens around here too. I'm sure that happens in a lot of places because I know like they go through like the sorting process they go through. Sometimes it's just a number they look at. It's like, oh, it's the, yeah, that looks right. And they, they just put it together, you know, and I'll get my, my neighbor's mail occasionally, which isn't a big deal because I can just walk next door and put it in their box or whatever. But I've gotten that same thing. I've never bothered to call about it. I found out pretty quickly that all I really had to do was put it back in my mailbox with a post-it note on it that said, mm-hmm. check the address again. You know, like the first couple of times I was trying to be nice about it. And then I got more and more sarcastic and, snar- and snarky with my messages <laughs> because, you know, it's one thing I could see, like if you're going through the quick sorting process in the morning, if you see a, the same number, like that's almost forgivable. But I've gotten ones that like not only the street doesn't match, but then neither does the number. <laughs> like there's nothing about it that could mean that it would be anywhere near. And it happens way too regularly, which is, you know, makes you think about what actually these people are getting paid to do because they're not doing their job what they do get paid to do they're not doing it the greatest they're probably just dropping it whatever it was attached yeah it got stuck somehow whatever not a big deal yeah so yeah i just i usually throw them back in my mailbox and they always pick them up the next day i would never i mean i only go to the post office when i absolutely have to and even though i mean it's not that far away i probably could walk there i think it's like maybe two miles walking distance but i yeah i try to avoid it so yeah i just throw it back in my mailbox man with a note (laughs) (laughs) screw that i you're you're coming back tomorrow why am i gonna go out of my way Like, do I feel bad that somebody else's mail is get, is going to get to them even later? Sure, but that's not my no, fault. No, you don't. Don't lie. Well, no, on some <laughs> on some level I do because I know what it's like to be wait. Like, if it's something important that you're waiting for or just w- whatever it is, if you're waiting for something and then it takes a couple extra days to show up, you know, whether, whether it's something that's going to make it a life and death situation or it's just going to inconvenience you. Either way, I, I know that feeling, so I can empathize with that, but it's not my responsibility. You know, they screwed. Like, I don't work for the fucking post office. Like, if I ever did talk to, to anybody at the post office and they suggested what you t- what they told you, I probably would have snapped on them. <laughs> like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. You want me to do your job for you? <laughs> I already get I already get extorted from to pay for your fucking job that you're not doing. Go fuck yourself, pal. <laughs> right. But I'm also not the nicest person in the world with when it comes to uh, <laughs> government employees. Uh, I, that is well documented. Although I must say, uh, to to divert this conversation for a little bit, I did I did actually have a positive experience this morning, with uh, although it started off bad, uh, but I had to have another building inspect somebody from the building department, one of their inspectors, come to my house uh, to verify that I don't have any. You know, what was I was apparently charged uh, when I when everything happened with me last year. And I, you know, the, the whole viral post and then me getting arrested and all the threats and all that stuff. I got, as I've mentioned before, I got reported to pretty much every agency anybody could think of. I was reported for whatever they could possibly come up with just to try to get me to, sh- try to have my life destroyed. And among the things were the town, the code, the zo- code zoning department. And I was cited at the time for having a quote unquote illegal fence because I never got the proper permit when my dad and I put the fence up on the, on the North side of my house, uh, I think before the kids were born, we actually did that. So, you know, quite a while back, uh, whether, whether, where there was already a fence there, like my neighbor already had a fence. I was just putting one on my side, you know, but I didn't get the proper paperwork. Uh, and I got a violation for the bathroom that we put in when the kids were born, uh, which of course I also didn't have the proper paperwork for. Apparently I also at the same time got a violation for running an illegal dog business which was interesting on two levels. Number one, because I never knew about it. I didn't get this violation or somehow it escaped me and I don't recall ever receiving any violation of any kind. And, the fa- and there was no follow-up ever since. But also... Did my- you say you didn't need a license in yes, the first place? Yes, that was the second point. <laughs> when I first started my business, I've talked about this openly before. I not only inquired about whether or not I needed a license 
or a permit or something when I started my business. I actually went so far as to almost petitioning my local congressman or the the local uh, the, the local town council rather uh, in that situation uh, to put in a permit or a license structure for my business because there wasn't one because that's how good of a wow. status I was at the time. Like I, <laughs> there isn't one. Oh my God, we what are we going to do? We need to have these things. So yeah, like I I wanted one and there wasn't one available, and I was told. After the first time I got reported to the town for some for some violation, and I was told like at that that point that most likely because it's an anonymous call that comes in that most likely it was a competitor trying to have me shut down. I was told at that time by the head of the zoning and building department, who it was a woman at that time. I don't remember her name, but whatever. I spoke to her directly because she was friends with my cousin, who at the time was the town clerk, and he called her up and said, "Hey, listen, you know, can you just." You know, my, my cousin's not looking to like, you know, break any laws or anything. He wants to be on the up and up. So you, can you please just tell him what he needs to do? And can you please just alleviate his fears and whatever? And she was like, oh, you're, you know, you're Mark's cousin. Sure. I'll help you out. And oh, you know what? Don't worry about it. Just, you know, take your listing off of Craigslist. Try to keep it quiet for a little while. There isn't. A, and these were her words. This is a, 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 a town official, a paid, you know, bureaucrat gets paid by taxes. One of the government people over there. This was her almost verbatim. Your business falls into what we would call uh, a gray area. There really isn't laws for or against it at this point. Only the amount of dogs you're allowed to have on your property at one time, and that's just the standard for everybody in the in the in the township, not just a, a commercial thing. It's it's a, it's a resi- it's a, the residential zoning. You're only allowed to have three dogs in the residential zoning uh, regulations. She's like, so as long as you just keep it quiet and you know don't go over the limit too much, yeah, you'll be fine. So this uh, this to me was getting the okay from government at the time. And I was like, all right. So that's what I just did for years. And I got reported a couple other times, most likely by, um, again, competitors who, uh, you know, scummy, scummily uh, reported me anonymously. And they, you know, inspectors came out, asked if they could peer my window, looked in my window, said, I don't see anything. All right, have a good day, sir, and left. So I never thought anything of this. And so, again, I didn't know about this violation last year. Apparently, somebody reported me for that, too. But this came up during the whole process of trying to sell my house. And after I had jumped through all these fucking hoops, which I've talked about on this show and my own show before, uh, 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 about, you know, having to go through the permit process and having to do the termite thing and all this stupid shit I've had to deal with. Uh, Now, all of a sudden, I get a word from my for my attorney over this past the past weekend saying hey uh everything's looking good mortgage companies uh, mortgage company gave their commitment we're we're looking at a closing date in possibly two to three weeks if you want i'm like oh this is awesome and then comes the second message but there's a problem there's this violation when they did the title search but his his advice to me, ah, don't worry about it. We'll wait to see what happens, you know, because this is Saturday. He's telling me we'll wait to see what happens when they when they try to run it again, you know, next week. Um, and then of course they try to run it again, and it comes up again. So now I get a panic stricken text from my attorney saying, "You need to take care of this." And I'm like, "You you told me not to worry about it. I'm so confused." Um, so I was dreading dealing with these people again because it just every time I deal with them, it ends up costing me more money. They find a new way to extort me, um, and uh, cost me more time. Uh, but I actually had a pleasant experience, and I think it was only because not only did this guy happen to know my real estate attorney, (laughs) his wife actually used to work for my cousin, the former town clerk. (laughs) So just because I had connections, I think he was very nice, but it started off badly because he was, he was here. He was he, like, we set an appointment yesterday. He said he would be here by 11. I said, great. 11, 10, 11, 15 guys still not here. I'm like getting pissed off already. Cause I'm like, like, I didn't know the fact that I, that he knew everybody ahead of time. I had only spoken to him on the phone, but I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Now I'm like sitting around waiting for this idiot to show up after like, they're the ones hold, they're literally holding up the sale of my house at this point, because there's this violation for this business that doesn't actually exist at all, much less exist, exist legally or legally, (laughs) but they are literally holding up this process once again for me to sell my fucking house. And now they're late. And when I call, the only thing I get is, yeah, he, we think he left here a little late. So he'll probably be late. He should be there. He, you know, if he doesn't though, it's like, but these are the things like they're just run through every scenario. They have no idea the people at his office. They have no idea whether he's actually going to show up my house or not. 
<laughs> and they just throw out every possible scenario. So like I'm already stewing when this guy finally rolls up at 1130 and then proceeds to take like three or four minutes in his car. Like after I watched him park it and turn the ignition off, he sat in his car for like almost another five full minutes. So at this point, I'm like ready to go, ready to explode after all my experiences. But then he comes like this old guy comes sauntering out of the truck, um, you know, with a, with a pretty pronounced limp and uh, very soft spoken and immediately starts telling me he knows my, you know, knows my attorney. And like that turns into a whole conversation. So I'm like, all right, I guess I won't bite his head off just yet. And literally he just like he spent more time talking to Jen and the kids because one of my because my daughters decide every once in a while they want to get super sociable with random people who walk into our house and want to tell them stories. And so they wanted to stop and tell this guy a story. And he stood there like he spent more time doing that than he actually did the quote unquote inspection. And literally all he did for the inspection was to check that I had he didn't he didn't even look for any signs of a business or anything. What he had to do because of the stupid regulations here was make sure that I had a fire detector, a, fi a smoke detector in every room, every bedroom rather, and a carbon monoxide uh, detector on each floor and that none of the bedrooms had locks that couldn't be punched out with one of those like punch out things that the firemen carry with them because um, those are all violations. Nothing to do with the business. But like I could have actually gotten busted for those things <laughs> for being out of code with that. Good times. Like I last night, I actually had to go and buy a smoke detector <laughs> for my bedroom in order for me to make sure that I had everything to pass that part of the inspection because we've never had one in there because since our house is so small, you know, 920 square feet that like it's a tiny house. The, we've only ever had a smoke and mono, a carbon monoxide uh, detector, one on the bottom, you know, one on the main floor and one in, one upstairs in the girls' room, but it, it will get to our room. Like if, if a fire starts at our room, the detector will pick it up. Like we're that close, you know, like so we were never concerned about it, but I actually had to go, you know, like I did my blog series about this on Steam a couple of weeks ago, the stupid bags I had to go out and buy just to have them thrown out for the bed and that whole oh, fucking yeah. experience. Yeah. Once again, I have to go out and spend money on a smoke detector for a house that I might actually be out of in three weeks. <laughs> it's just like the, like the insanity of government, man. It's just, it really is. I, I don't know how anybody can deal with this type of shit on a regular basis or even not just have to deal with this every once in a while and not be against the idea of government. <laughs> I really don't get that. Well, on the bright side, as a lawyer, I'm going to be dealing with it every single day, but I'm already against it, so I don't have anywhere else to go, unfortunately. So I'm just going to be going nuts and bashing my head into a wall. Yes, but you know Good about times. it. You know about it ahead of time, and you're also choosing to go that. I'm talking about like the normal. That doesn't fucking matter. I, I guess it does. I'm talking about the normal. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm talking about the normal everyday person who is out there, you know, and dealing with life and thinks government is either good, uh, they're indifferent to it, or at least they think it's necessary. And then they run into these like they're like slow motion buzz saws. <laughs> you know, like they, they just managed to grind you up in the process, not just, you know, it's not quick and painless. Oh, no. <laughs> it's just like little little chinks here and there. Like, because I, I know I'm not the only one who has to deal with this stuff because my, my attorney keeps trying to remind me of this. He's like, you know, it's not just them against. It's not you against the world, you know, and I'm like, I know it's not me against the world, John. I'm like, but this is like I called this. I called this from the beginning. I said the state was going to find a way to throw every possible obstacle in my path on my way out the fucking door. And I have not been wrong. <laughs> True enough. True enough. He's like, you know, whether, like I said, whether it was some asshole on an anonymous tip because they were pissed off and they were, you know, they, were, they had hurt feelings over words they read on a screen um, or the or the the actual local government th themselves becoming aware of things and just harassing me about stupid shit that like it just it, or, you know, that them finding other ways to hold up the sale of my house or the bank, which is heavily regulated with the government and in bed with the government, and that whole like that whole mess that got almost held everything up too, you know, like it's just, it really has, it's been nonstop. And it's like, yeah, I know other people deal with this, but I can't understand how other people can deal with this and not go. There has to be a better way. 
<laughs> right. Yeah. A lot of people have to deal with the runaround from insecurities or, or inefficiencies uh, in government, and then they don't really attribute the, the problem correctly to the government itself. Yeah. They see the one part that's, you know, affecting them directly right then. And, and even then, they may not even denounce or become disenfranchised with that one part in its entirety. They may focus on who's ever like in charge of that department or the particular person they were dealing with and, you know, not recognize that, well, the same shit's going on over here in this department. And you see what goes on over here? It's the same thing. <laughs> like this isn't just a, an isolated incident just because you happen to encounter it. And that's the you know, the only thing you're aware of. There's experiences that everybody else has that are very similar to yours, but with a completely different department and a completely different person and a completely different set of regulations. But they all manage to fuck you somehow, some way. <laughs> ah, yep. Yeah, too many people, they see government failures and think that, oh, we need more government to fix it. Yeah. No, of course, bro. Of course. Of course. More oversight. We've got, we've got to we've got to burn the village to save it. You know. Mm -hmm. Let's just let's just start mar let's just start stacking more watchers on top of the you know on top of the watchers, and uh, they will uh, they'll take care of the problem, and uh, you know instead of turtles all the way down, it's watchers all the way up, and you know that's how that that's how you get it. Do you want a fucking full fledged? All out police state because that's how you get a full fledged all out police state, people. <laughs> you keep asking for more fucking watchers. Eventually, everybody's watching everybody and nobody gets to do anything fun. God's sakes. Fun Od is for losers. Odin's sakes. I slipped there. Take that back. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I'm not, you know, listen, man, I, I, I still want to have some fun, damn it. And I'm not. I'm not even trying no. to get to the. I'm not even trying to get to the fun part yet. I'm just trying to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like it's so asinine to me that you know. Again, it's 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 hard. Despite my my lawyer's constant uh, reminding me of of the of you know the fact that it's not me me against the world. It's kind of hard not to look at it a lot of those times when it's like, no, it's not the world. It's me against New. It's me against the government of New York State on pretty much every level at this point because I'm dealing with the state government. The, uh, the the local government and the county government uh, through all of this mess. So, and I'm the federal government, of course, is always intertwined in everything. So I am dealing with government on every fucking level. But even if I just focus on the New York state government, yeah, it's pretty much me against the New York state government. And all I want to do is leave the fucking state. And they just don't want to let me leave. They really don't. No. no. I don't get it. Such, I'm such a menace. You would think they'd be happy to get rid of me. Well, we can't let those tax cattle off of the plantation. Well, I mean, yeah, if I paid taxes, allegedly. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, that'll be another whole mess. I'm gonna. Well, that's another. Like now, I'm thinking about it. Like, it's, it's not even going to be done for me now. Now that I'm off on this tangent, I might as well continue. <laughs> I'm uh I know I'm not even going to be done with this cuz even once I get past this and once I get into uh it, it's once I finally sell this fucking house and I am temporarily homeless which I recently did a well I attempted to do a vlog for Steam it uh, unfortunately, Shane apparently was the only person who's actually been able to watch the video because there was a glitch in the upload and the audio plays perfectly and there's a still shot from the video, but on any other browser other than the Brave browser, apparently you can't actually watch the video, but I was starting a, a series because I plan on doing those once I'm living out of my car uh, before I actually find a place to live in Indiana and I, I was going to plan on doing a whole series on these things and it was like, all right, well, that, you know, once I get out of the, once I get done with the house, and then even if the court thing finally ends, it's like, yeah, I'm finally free. And then it's like, no, not really, because eventually I'm going to have to come up against the issue of the fact of my, of my multiple time, I believe, suspended license here in New York. <laughs> and, you know, when I relocate, if I decide I want to, because I mean, I don't really have a choice 
well, I mean, I, uh, there's always a choice, but, you know, of switching my insurance because New York's ridiculously expensive for ever, everything. So oh, it, would yeah. make, it would make absolutely no sense to keep my residence here. Uh, and then, and then and while living in a state that would be much cheaper if I just actually registered there instead. Yeah, things uh, are a lot cheaper here in the Midwest. Exactly. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to get an Indiana license. And once I go to do that, it's going to be discovered that I have a suspended license here, which means I'm finally going to have to pay off all that crap too, which of course is you know, another... Was that? I wonder if they're actually going to notice that or not, because I'm not sure how well connected all the states are. They might not even 10, catch that. 15 years ago, I would have readily agreed with you. I know, I'm not sure if all the states signed on, but I know it might've been a little longer than a decade now, but for some reason that number is sticking in my head somewhere around that time frame ago, uh, a, a bunch of the states got together and decided to start uh, openly sharing information on stuff like this because yeah that used to be the case uh you know whenever i drove out of state i was always were i was never worried because even if i got a ticket i wouldn't get those the dreaded points from the new york state license on my license which meant yeah i could get a ticket whatever i paid it off it was no big deal um where here in new york you get a ticket you pay it off you still accumulate points if you get enough points then they take your license away from you and uh, and then I remember they changed that to the point where you could actually get points on your New York state license by receiving a ticket in at least a decent amount of the states. I don't remember if it was all of them or not. But again, this is going back a decade, so I don't remember. You know, I don't remember exactly the the specifics, and I also don't know what's changed since then. It's possible. I guess it's still possible. I don't know if all fifty states finally signed on to that. Um, but I just assumed this was an inevitability that I was going to have to deal with it eventually, uh, obviously, because it's an inevitability. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I just, so I'm not totally done, I don't think. It's just, no matter what, the bureaucracy in New York is going to find a way to keep me trapped. <laughs> <laughs> Never come here, people. Please, do yourself a favor. Visit New York City if you must, but then get the fuck out. <laughs> do not stay for any reason. <sighs> anyway, so yeah, <laughs> so that's my. So now that's, that you've got that off your chest, that's, that's my rant of the week. So now, um, now, um, well, we were complaining about. Go- well, I, we were talking about government, and then we started talking about my government, and you know, things happen, man. Yeah, so but that's where I am. Uh, people, hopefully, hopefully, we, I can figure out the, the issue with the glitch last time, and it won't happen again. Uh, people can look forward to my upcoming vlog series. I'm going to try my homelessness vlog series, and then uh, I also plan on trying to do some videos as I'm taking my first trip to Indiana, where I might actually, depending on time and scheduling, I might actually stop by and bug Shane for a little while on my way. Um, we're going to see. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. We're, I'm going to try to, I'm trying, I'm trying to lay it all out. I don't know exactly when I'm going to leave yet, but it's going to be sometime after my next court date, which is actually next week. Although by the time this play, by the time this actually releases, I may have actually already had my court date. I don't remember where we are in the scheduling anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be heading out on the road soon <laughs> either way. And, and uh, making at least one trip out there and, you know, trying to find a home for my family and I, and then, uh, you know, seeing some people along the way. And I, I plan on recording as much of that as I possibly can, because as I, I believe, I think I mentioned last week, you know, things may be a little erratic for us in the upcoming weeks, as far as shows go, hopefully we've, uh, we've got enough in the can and or I'm able to do guerrilla style radio, a uh, guerrilla style podcasting at some point for us to be able to keep getting the shows and not miss a beat. But I, I warned everybody last week, this may be coming, but in the interim, hopefully we'll have uh we'll have a lot of other content for you guys to see. Cause it's not going to be behind a paywall or anything. I mean, it'll be on steam it. Cause well, Hey, Hey, I might as well at least try to get paid for it. Cause uh, actually, despite the video not working, that was actually my, my most successful steam post to date. Uh, I've made oh, more really? money on other posts, but that was when I got like boosts from like the D live, bo- uh, D, you know, the D sound boost or the D, uh, D two boost or whatever that you get directly from those, uh, those channels accounts. Um, this time was without well, it. Yeah. You know, it's only eight, but it's, it's only up to eight bucks right now, but I got like 136 upvotes. It's the most I've gotten off anything I've done so far. Hell yeah. Good for so, you, man. So I'm like, 
fuck, man. All right. And it didn't even, and, and a bunch of people were like, yeah, the video didn't work, but we heard you. It was good enough. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Sweet. Cool. Let's make it happen. <laughs> new, new content that I, that I only have to worry about getting. I just, all I'm going to have to worry about is getting it to enough, uh, getting to Wi Fi long enough to upload it. Cause I, I can record it without internet. You know, that's fine. I could do this shit all day long. And, uh, that's what I'm going to do. M- M- Murder Dog and I are going to be doing a bunch of shows, I think, <laughs> out of the back of my car. We'll see how that goes. So, anyway, we were uh, back to what we were originally talking about the whole Trump, Amazon. And I know Andre started off by saying he really doesn't care. I don't, I mean, I don't really care either. I think it's funny. And I think that I think it's funny that people are up in arms in it because uh, about it uh, in either direction. Because it's like, well, yeah, as we've already mentioned, the USPS loses money every fucking year. And the government set them up to do that with the whole monopoly scheme when they ran poor Lysander out of business. Simply not 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 because they were trying to do a service. They were trying to do a service for the people. They legitimately ran him out of business because he was doing it better than them. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah that's true. Force. That's true. Yeah, like if nobody knows the story of the, uh, I'll try to put some links in the show notes. If people don't know the story of Lysander Spooner and the American letter, Mail Letter Company, which he started, uh, like like I said, I can't remember exactly when he started it, but it was somewhere in the sixties, eighteen sixties, seventies, when they finally shut him down. I think maybe the late seventies. Uh, he like, he started it because he was agitated by the fact that the uh, new postal stuff of the of the you know the Pony Express or whatever was going on wasn't really effective and you know it was they were charging a hell of a lot of money uh, to ship these things for a postage and he was just like hey I can get this done for a hell of a lot cheaper I don't see any and, you know he was obviously you know Lysander Spooner uh, extremely self-educated man like you know studied the law never never went to law school but was essentially smarter and knew the law better than just about any lawyer out there in the day because he just studied the hell out of it <laughs> and uh, figured out how to do these things and was actually a practicing lawyer before they they I think they he was part of that whole deal when they squashed that too wasn't that when the bar association came to be or was that earlier than that no that was back in the early no they yeah, that was the eighteen early eighteen hundreds. The uh, well, <clears throat> lawyers as a formal profession, as a licensed profession, didn't uh, didn't become like a nationalized thing until the uh, late nineteenth century, early twentieth century. Okay, so then yeah, that was I, right I think around he the time was. that uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. started to like really come into his own, oh. which was right after the Civil War. Yes. Yeah. I, th- I think that's what it, I think that's what it, I think he was one of the people who got caught up in that because he had been he, is, he essentially had been a practicing lawyer for years as well without a degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. they told him he wasn't allowed to do that anymore. Either. <laughs> yeah. The the formalizing of American uh, of the American legal profession happened uh, towards the end of the 19th century after the Civil War, pretty much. Yeah. So, yeah, and uh, as things and, naturally uh, go, when you have licensing schemes, uh, people are no longer do, allowed to practice independently. God forbid you I want just, to be a doctor and not have to worry about licensing. And I just looked up the American Letter Mail Company, which actually was prior to the Civil War. Uh, Lysander Spooner started it in 1844 and was eventually forced out of business in 1851. Oh, wow. They shut it down before the war. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. And again, because he was doing it better than them <laughs> and cheaper than them. And so what it comes down to is he was trying to do something. The government came in and then he wrote a series of of works about why the government sucks ass. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> that was actually that, that was something I, I was planning on doing for uh, before we ended up going off the radio on the on the fiends. There was I was planning on doing a solo show one night where I was actually going to do a, a show on Spooner, but I was going to talk about his progression uh, as a as a thinker and, and his views on stuff because you could you could just by just by uh, juxtaposing is, is that the right term there I think two two different uh, pieces he wrote uh, the obvious the obvious one being the constant you know no no trees in the constitution about no authority but actually viewing that against how he wrote and what he was thinking back when he wrote the, uh, the, the unconstitutionality of slavery. I think that was, the, I think that might've been the actual title. I'm not sure, but that the piece that he wrote on that, that he was basically saying that the constitution didn't, um, cause so many people said that, Oh, you know, the three fifths clause and all that stuff. Oh, it, it allows for slavery and that type of stuff. And he actually made an extremely impassioned and very well-reasoned and documented, you know, cited whatever argument that, you know, no, this wasn't the case at all. It def- you know, he, he made, he made the case. And then later on 
basically because I think my, my I mean my 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 interpretation of, of of what the events that happened were because he kept getting screwed by the fucking government <laughs> later in his life he was like yeah fuck this shit it just man. got progressively worse <laughs> yeah. just progressively less and less tolerance for the level of bullshit that was going on exactly he started off defending the constitution in this um, you know great piece if you haven't read it i highly suggest it's another good piece of uh, spooner's work if you haven't read it i highly suggest you go do i'll put links for it in the show notes um but, you know he goes from that point in his life writing that and then being screwed over with the with the mail service thing and uh you know and then he was, you know, he was attacked for a long time because he was a very vocal abolitionist, um, you know. So, I mean, obviously, finally. And then, of course, after all the work that people like him and did him and others did for years and decades before that, because, I mean, there were people trying to abolish slavery. The Quakers were trying to do it before the country officially formed. Um, so there were active radical abolitionists here uh, in what is known as the United States for a very long time. And all of those people, all of their work was swept under the rug and uh, good old honest Abe was given all the credit for it. So like, <laughs> you can kind of understand, like I said, at least from my view, I could totally understand why Spooner went from, you know, defending the hell out of the constitution to going, this thing's a piece of shit and it doesn't have authority over me, you or anybody else. He went from, Hey, look, the constitution is great and it definitely does not authorize slavery to be it one thing or another. This much is true. Either the Constitution has authorized the form of government we have or is powerless to stop it. In either case, it is unfit to exist. Absolutely. Weird. Took him like what? Less than a decade, I think, overall. Uh, yeah, I don't remember exactly. I don't remember the dates of when all the when all those actually came out because it's so the, the it was something like 10 years. It wasn't even a very long time. It didn't take him that long. No. And there's I just wish I mean, as, as far as like, especially that the 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 second piece you're talking we're talking about the uh, no, no treason. I wish that the other pieces of that existed because there's actually a lot of people if they if, if people have even heard of Spooner most of the most of the time, the only thing they've ever heard of is no treason. And when they've heard of that, they've only ever heard of with the no treason the constitution of no authority which is actually number which is actually part six yeah of what was intended to be possibly an even longer series than that and he put out i think it's parts one and two came out and then with everything else that was going on in in the country and in his life and everything else he decided to skip ahead to number six, thinking that he would get back to the other ones, but it became so important to him that he get this part of it out that he jumped ahead. And if he, if he had ever even started any of the other works or even had him close to finish or whatever, I don't think anything was ever found of those. There was, I don't think there's any records of those whatsoever. So the only surviving pieces are the are numbers one, number two, and number six. And I mean, they're not exactly the easiest of reads, um, I mean, I think he's a very eloquent writer, but he was a very eloquent writer in his day. Um, so he definitely uses a lot of language that most people might you know, scratch their head and go, what the fuck is he saying? Because <laughs> um, you, ha you have to understand that time period and you have to understand how people spoke and wrote. Um, but if you studied, if you've studied that the history of that time at all, then you probably at least have a decent, you know, you you've probably come across other people's writings, so you should have a decent idea. But I know some people like the first time I ever came across it, I had to like look up a bunch of words and I was like, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> but uh, but I think all the pieces are, you know, they're they're all relatively, you know, they're not short, short. Um, but they're not like ridiculously long either, but yeah, I, I think they're all worth the read, but I, 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 like I said, I thought it would the, the, you know, the contrast between where he was when he wrote that first piece to, you know, where he came, however many years later after dealing with all that stuff. And, you know, it, and again, it may just be my confirmation bias coming through, but I just, I can't help but think it was all that just shit that he had to deal with, with government day in and day out <laughs> that finally he was just like, yep, yep fuck it all nope i was wrong uh fuck that constitution thing i don't care Wh whether whether it uh authorizes slavery or not it's still a piece of shit fuck it <laughs> so well even the most patient among us when we deal with bullshit for long enough we finally just get tired of it we just throw up our hands and say fuck it burn it all yeah you know I, I try to claim that's why I snap, although most people who know me would say I'm not very patient to begin with, but I, you know, I can be. And, you know, 
I think I've dealt with enough bullshit that I'm allowed to snap you. Anyway, either way, <laughs> whether I've been patient or not, damn it. <laughs> I've been pa- I've been patient about staying in this fucking state that I don't want to be in anymore. I think that I think that's got to count for something. Need to get the hell out of here. Just let me go, damn it. And uh, let people s- send mail how they want. And Trump begins. Stop complaining about shit that you clearly know nothing about. Although this just might be him playing. What is it? Thirty eight. 138 dimensional chess underwater. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's what he's doing. Whatever he's fucking doing. Take that shit to the bank. I, I I really hope I haven't paid that much attention. I hope people are really not trying to push that narrative anymore um, because it's really got to become so blatantly obvious because I know I, I know I've at least I heard of, of a couple of people. I mean, hell, even even old Molly put a, a, put all put the old black pill on his uh, on his Twitter feed a couple of weeks ago. Uh so I think I, I think I also heard recently that even Ann Coulter came out against them. So I, I, I can't. I, I hope there's not too many people still buying this buying this shit. <laughs> that it's there's yeah. all this grand game, and he's just play, he's just playing those stupid Democrats. It's like ah oh, man, I I tried to warn everybody. I really did. I tried really really hard. I got yelled at a lot. <laughs> for trying to say it's not going to be different there may be some cosmetic tweaks but you can guarantee the important shit is going to continue this the same way it has as before and well look what's happened <laughs> yep what difference does it make it really you know shit. well actually that that's i'd like to bring up that point what difference does it make so i mean whether you know people were like rallying behind trump or not who cares Well, I, th- I I think I think it only. Oh, well, who cares? Sure, I I think I don't know. At least for me, I think it it only matters in the sense that a lot of people who I think were either really close to giving up to begin with, um, or thought they had already given up to begin with, <laughs> uh, got sucked back in again because of the uh, the hope. That it would finally be that you know they 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 turned Charlie Brown to the state's Lucy once again uh, in hopes that it would, uh, it would just be different this time, and you know, unfor- well, I mean, well, case well, case in point, we've had conversations uh, you and me regarding uh, whether or not Trump's a good thing or a bad thing, and I mean, I thought he was going to be a good thing. Clearly, this is you know turning out to be more much more of a mixed bag, but. I mean, ultimately, whether he's a good thing or not, I mean, is there a difference? Does it make much of a difference? Well, I guess the the end result is really what ultimately matters. So if it ends up not working out well, okay, cool. So it didn't end up working out well. I mean, ultimately, unless, you know, people are like actually donating money to the government in any more capacity than they were before, what, what, actually has been accomplished or like what actually has happened right so i mean i I don't know i I just i guess i'm just really burnt out on everything that's been happening and i just i really don't have anything more invested in it because between the smugness of some people and the smugness of other people it's just it's a whole plethora of bullshit and i'm frankly just tired of it yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty fucking bummed out today. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not much of a. I'm not much of a uh, uplifting co-host today. So I apologize. And it's funny too. You were actually the first one to respond to me this morning. Well, no, actually, Dave was. That's right, Dave was. But you were. You were the first one to respond to all chipper. You, you sounded really chipper. Yep, I'll be there. <laughs> and now you get here, and you're like, ah, fuck everything. Uh yeah. I don't know. I just. Uh, no, I don't. I don't blame you. Know, you like once, once you have enough conversations on on Facebook about stupid bullshit, you well, just see. Get there's tired your fr- there's there there's your first problem. I've stopped doing that, and I've felt much better about things. Oh, good for you! And <laughs> fucking parade around your bullshit. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> well, to get back to your question, uh, I I think again, like I, I think it matters only to the degree that that, that there's people like I still while I've given up you know obviously hope on the political system and uh while well, i've given up temporarily on hope on being able to reach a certain amount of people there's still plenty of people out there that i think need 
reaching of some sorts and i'm still at heart try you know an activist of some sorts trying to get out there and trying to get the message and while i have mentioned many times that i am you know definitely focused more on what i can do for myself and my family and then hopefully grow that into a bigger a, a, a larger well a small but larger community of people as we're trying to build our little thing over there in indiana um you know and then figure out ways that we can uh, provide value to, you know, increase the, increase the wealth of all of our situations. You know, that's, that's my main focus. I still would like to try to acquire more freedom along the way and hopefully get other people to do so. So I've been trying to reach out again to other people, or at least, uh, you know, at least get, uh, get the message to certain people and the type of people that, you know, were on the fence and got sucked back in. Those are the type of people I think are still the closest to be able to be reached. And it's like, okay, well now you're disenfranchised all over again. And just like I said at the time when the, when, when Hillary finally got the, the nomination. And I said at the time, this is when you go after the Bernie supporters. And when Trump won the election, I said, this is the time right now. You don't wait. This is the time you go after the Hillary supporters, because when the people are most the, when people are the most disaffected is when you have the most up, when you have the best chance of reaching them, even if you don't actually get through to them completely and have them accept whatever message you're trying to get them to understand. At least you've planted the seed at one of the most susceptible times for their brain. And, you know, a little way, you know, even if it's not right then, a little way down the road, even if it takes the next thing to happen to them or the next letdown to be all of a sudden be like, hey, what was that thing I heard that last time around? Crap, that makes a lot more right. sense now. You know, that, like that type of thing. So, like, is like I said, why it matters? I don't know. I, I, I still hold out hope. I guess that there's still, you could still reach a bunch of people. And I, I've been. This is a belief of that I that's been reinforced recently in a couple of conversations that I've had, and also ones that I've listened to. Uh, you know, because my conversation with with Mance Raider a couple of weeks ago, and then also a, a show of a couple of shows of his I was listening to and a couple other shows I've listened to recently uh, reminded me that there, you know, there's a lot of people who really did come from a lot of different uh, backgrounds and ideologies to get to where they are right now. Um, you know, like there was the, the whole thing that I used to argue with Dave all the time when Dave, you know, or well, Dave, actually Dave was never this bad, but a lot of people who had denounced, you know, talking to leftists at all last year where there's a whole big thing. It's like, you can't reach them. You can't reach them. And it's just like, wait a minute, what about all the examples? And like, since then I've now found even more people that came from the left originally. And it's like, okay, obviously if you can reach idiot, you know, useful idiots on the left, like you, we used to be, you can reach any of these people eventually. Um, so it never, you know, you can always try to get through to these you know people on either side so i think yeah but the the problem i the problem i've seen especially recently as shit's gone downhill with trump is there's just this this innate smugness in everybody who towed the party line and was like oh you know trump's gonna be just as bad as hillary and so now when shit's starting to go south it's like hey told you so that's soul crushing that creates despair and that destroys hope in people like our hopes like whatever hopes we had whatever hopes people had pinned on Trump, for the most part, have been dashed, and it's just pouring salt in the wound, and that that's not good. That this is it's not positive, and that's mostly what I see. Yeah, it's not. There's I, a lot of animosity where supposedly there shouldn't be any animosity, and yet there it is. There it is. Well, and it's just that level of smug satisfaction that just really fucking gets under my skin. Well, I, I can understand. Like that. I'm sorry for hoping that things were going to work out. Stupid me. Fucking a. Well, I, I, I think in fairness, you, you do got to take into account the amount of arrogance that was coming from certain people <laughs> who were in that camp when it when what it, arro I mean, it's uh, it, it hardly qualifies as arrogance when you're literally saying, well, you know, everything that I see right now looks good. Hopefully he does some good stuff. Well, no, I'm not and talking about I'm not talking about you. I'm talking there were people out there and 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 the pushback you see unfortunately is a lot, has a lot to do with this and it's the back and forth and it's the same exact thing in reverse that would have happened had Hillary won. The well, same, yeah, cuz a lot of this literally people, started from the it started from the very beginning. The minute anybody said, "Oh man, Trump looks like he's going to do great things." There was just a plethora of voices saying, "No, he's just as bad as Hillary. Oh, this is never going to work." Yeah, whatever. Like, okay. And again, what difference does it make? 
as long as as long as the as long as the status quo exists, somebody's going to be ruling over you. You can either hope something good is ha- going to happen, or you can be a curmudgeon the whole time. I mean, which whichever road you choose, fine, but don't you know, don't bash on the other people that are hopeful that something good is going to come out of this. Well, yeah, but again, and I mean, I- we had this conversation when there's a net benefit that comes out of some sort of government action. Are we still going to complain that, you know, are we going to complain in that particular moment that, well, there's still government? Well, yeah, of course, it's a given, but we can still celebrate the small victories and the good things that happen. I mean, we can always celebrate when taxes get lowered. Oh, no, I, I get, yeah, we, we, we have had that discussion and I, and I don't disagree with you there. What, what I, what I meant more so with the whole arrogance factor was that there was, there was, there, there, there's a, there's a difference between people like yourself who were hopeful that things would get better and people out there that were telling anybody who said, listen, get like me, like I said, I was out there. I wasn't, I was doing this before the election, before, before the election actually happened. And I kept trying to say to people, and I wasn't say I wasn't trying to be smug about it, um, which you know I, I obviously didn't really have the opportunity because nothing had happened yet. But I wasn't like I was just trying to say, hey, it, it's not going to matter, and and I'm not saying this to be soul crushing. I'm trying to point out, let's find different. Like, there's no point to get back into this. There's no point to get because you know you're getting yourself, you're you're pinning not just hopes, but these. Ty- when I said this, I was getting attacked by people who were saying that you know I was an idiot. Uh, there's definitely differences there. You can't say this. You're generalizing. You're, a bit, you know, you're well, like, I mean, I, there are differences. You can't. You couldn't make the argument that there weren't differences. Oh no, I, I, there are stark, solid differences. I've, I've always said the the differences are aesthetic. That's what really. That's what it really comes they're, down to. They're, okay, I, I'm. They're not. We'll, we'll we'll table that discussion for another time. Yeah. I still think there are significant political differences, policy differences. But po- yeah, po- that being said, I understand where you're going. Yeah, I no, the, the, the overall this. framework, like the the core, is going to head in the same direction no matter what. That's just that's the way it's been working for for fucking decades. It doesn't matter who's at the helm. It matters who's been in who's been behind the scenes for decades doing this stuff. Because that you know the, we've talked about this plenty of times. The fact that bureaucrats are there for on average so much longer than any any of the even you know you get those politicians that have been there for a couple of decades, but they're actually not as common when you think about the the five hundred and thirty five people that are holding that office every year. You know, there's like what maybe 20 to 50 of them out of that group that are like that, that hold those positions for that long. The rest of them, they cycle in and out. Bureaucrats are there for a hell of a lot longer. Those people get those jobs and those are the ones who run all the different agencies and they're the ones who get to create all their own regulations and they're the ones who actually shape the the most of the policy, uh, you know, that and the different special interests. Those are the ones who've been shaping the policy forever. So it really doesn't matter. That's why when I say aesthetics, I mean, for the most part, yeah, you're going to get certain changes. Certain things will happen that won't happen with the other one. But the big core things, especially if they've campaigned on the opposite of it, oh, you can guarantee you those things are going to happen. <laughs> That's just the way it's going to work, because there's there's no there's no there's no historical evidence to the contrary. It's just been going this way, you know, which is why I've I kept making the comparisons to Reagan, and I kept trying to get people to see that, and it's just like it's you're getting smote, you people are getting snowed by this again. It's 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 literally an entertainment industry icon who is doing the snow job. Like you, you could, you couldn't be any more blatant about it. Just like with Reagan, like, you know, this B this this Hollywood actor, B list Hollywood actor <laughs> who got roped into the political game for the governor thing with California originally, but like he was an actor. Like you really didn't see that coming. Here you got Trump larger than life for decades, literally a reality fucking TV star guys really didn't see the shit coming <laughs> like you were going to get snowed you didn't see a con job coming really folks come on it was a fight like seriously especially because so many of those people complain about hollywood too it's like you don't make the connection really you don't get that you don't see that this is all lies whatever they claim to do you know yeah what's uh honestly yeah uh, what's the what's Tom, gary what, johnson could have made any difference either no of course not what, what's Tom, what's tom what's tom woods's law Whoever you whoever you vote for, you get McCain, or is that Horton? One of Hortons, I forget. They all they have their own bunch of laws they've all come up with now. But I, th- I think that was his. No matter who you vote for, you get John McCain. I think that might have been Woods. <laughs> that, that sounds like Tom Woods. I think, yeah, like yeah. Tom Woods and, and you're right. Because <laughs> look what ha- look what's happened. 
<laughs> no matter what, people voted for George uh, for Bush Jr. the first time because he was play- he was he was he was on the anti-war kick. That's what he was claiming. He was he was chastising Clinton for the stuff that he did, you know. And then as soon as he got in, what happened? You know, what did I hear recently? I can't remember what show I was listening to, but I heard recently that there there's a quote um, from Bush apparently that saying you know that or very early on that he just really wanted to go to war because he knew that was the best way to get uh, to, to, to get a reelection. If he got a war that he could easily win because he learned that from his daddy, <laughs> although his daddy didn't win again, but you know, that's what you, everybody loved him after that though. Cause you know, he went in and kicked ass. Um, so that's what you got to do, you know? So yeah, people, he ran as the, he ran as the more anti-war candidate and, or the, the, le- the less hawkish one. And he got John McCain. And then Obama came in swearing he was going to be the anti-war candidate and you got John McCain <laughs> and then Trump comes into office <laughs> bashing the shit out of Clinton, rightly so in, in almost all cases, um, claiming to be the, <laughs> the non-war candidate. <laughs> and so far, we've got a whole lot of fucking John McCain, uh, <laughs> at least on the forest, foreign policy front. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, and, and to me, that like that is still the most and what if if not the one of the most important issues is the whole foreign policy thing because it's what draw it prints i mean yeah okay if you take out the fed they can't do anything but you know like the foreign policy game and like that whole shit like that really is what drives everything because that is what you know when people want to smugly say oh the the u.s dollar isn't backed by nothing it's backed by the full faith and credit of the united states uh what they mean by that without realizing it is what it's backed by is the military might of the fucking united states so that pretty much you know that's what keeps people that's what keeps china from saying yeah we owe you know we own so much of your debt at this point you guys could just go fuck yourself we're not giving you any more money and you know what we're gonna take some shit like just walking in and say we're gonna take all this shit like that's what stops china from doing the chinese government from doing that that's what stops a lot of like all the other world's governments from doing shit and stopping them from the, from the empire building that's been going on for so long because of that might so that's what really drives everything so foreign policy which is one of the things that i ignored for years um uh, to, to my own detriment, unfortunately, uh, is, uh, you know, I still, I think it's probably the most important thing. I mean, they, Scott Horton says it a lot and I, I think he's right. I think it, re- it really is it because it, re- it really drives everything. And if, if the, if there's no change in that, then yeah, there's really no, really no sizable difference. No, like a, a discernible difference rather, I should say for me that, that it's going to matter at all. Um, whether it would have been Hillary who was in there or not, like I said, she might have started. She might have tried to start other wars sooner, which uh, <laughs> you know. But other than that, a lot of this other stuff, would have, the foreign policy stuff, would have kept going because she she wanted to continue a lot of the Obama stuff anyway, and that's ended up with Trump doing anyway because Obama just continued the Bush, the Bush shit. Um, <laughs> you know, so I don't know, man. I I think it's important enough that it's. Like I said, that it, I, I think that makes it, you know, it, 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 that's why to me, when I, when I say it's not, it doesn't make a difference. Now, I'm not trying to go around rubbing it in. And I do agree with you that people that are just con- like, if oh, that's all they're harping on. Like, see, we told you so. Like, okay, yeah, you're right. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't get you anywhere. Like, I have no problem saying that with that to anybody who was like very arrogant to me about it in the first place. But just once after that, like, what's the point? you're like it gloating over it doesn't make anything better for anybody either. So yeah, you were right. Good. Say your piece, move on. You know, we still got to find solutions, right? I mean, people like us who actually are still want freedom. Well, yeah. So, okay. Back to the drawing board for some people, I guess. Great. Let's go back. <laughs> you know, this for, for people who were hanging on this as for, for people like yourself, Andre, who weren't out there saying, oh, there, there's there's so much of a difference. It has to be it has to be Trump. You know, I remember you saying this at the time. You were hopeful. OK, I, I, I have no problem with people being hopeful. Of course, I get that. But like I said, other people took it to, to, too far. But now it's like, all right. So if you were hopeful, well, then maybe this killed your last hope. So let's give up on politics altogether. 
let's go out and find different like, different options and let's try to work together towards that, which, you know, great for me because that's what I've been preaching for the longest time, finding solutions outside of the state so we can convince more people that we don't need the fucking state in the first place. So I don't know. Like I said, for me, yeah, I, no, I, I got you. I got you. It's just, it's, it seems like every fucking day there's always something else and it's just this net fucking, I don't know. I'm going to stop being a downer though. For real. I just, well, I'll just leave it there. Uh, so yeah, I'll just leave it there. I, it's, it's been, it's been a, a long couple of weeks for me, so I'm still I pretty burned out. Most of, mostly it's been school. Um, I had my, uh, my, uh, last assignment for, uh, legal, uh, legal research and writing. And that was horrendous. That was a horrendous time expenditure, but uh, I got it done. I did pretty well. Uh, okay. Actually, speaking of which, this this is it, this is in particular what's been burning me out because like people have been making uh, legal arguments without citing law, even though they were referring to law. Like it's one thing when you philosophize about legal theory because legal theory is legal theory. It's just that it's theoretical, right? You can argue about uh, you know the concept of, of property rights, or whatever, and you don't have to actually cite law because it's not it's super law, right? It's it's not. It's not citing specific law to, to make your point. I mean, John Locke didn't actually have to cite to the law in order to, you know, conceptualize the the labor theory of property. John Finnis didn't have to cite to law and legal precedent to come up with his, uh, you know, various irreducible uh, components of human culture and, and uh, human morality. But uh, when you're actually making legal arguments based on things and you don't cite law or you do one worse and you're like, well, you can go look it up yourself. Fuck you, dude. For real. Just fuck you. I have to do this shit fucking daily. You can go fuck yourself <laughs> with a cactus. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my piece. Well, that's <laughs> well, I'm going to make arguments about the law cite the fucking law. Otherwise, shut up. Well, see, another reason why you should just stay off these other platforms, <laughs> because I don't blame you. I, I Again, if you're dealing with that constantly and, you know, if you're I mean, if you're doing it in school and then you have to step outside and try to have a conversation, it gets brought up. I, of course, your mind's going to go there and it's like, well, you're not even you're not even providing the information and I'm constantly looking up the information. I, I, I understand why you're frustrated. I should just avoid that altogether. Not have conversations with these people. Fuck them. Well, yeah, but I mean, how do you outreach to people whose, you know, points of view stay there? You know, where like, I know I, it's a, it's a, it's a fine line. Maybe you should just take a break. And until that's, and that's been, and that's really my, my, my underlying problem is I, I still want to reach out to people and I still want to have conversations and, and challenge people's assumptions, particularly about the constitution and constitutional law, especially as I get more adept in understanding it and being able to articulate it. Right. But any number of conversations I have devolve into, Oh, well, it's in the constitution. Okay. Where cite the article and section. Oh, well, it's in the constitution. Okay. Cite the article and section. Oh, well, it just says that. You are you fucking serious? Well, <laughs> is this what we're doing right now? See, yeah, well, I, unfortunately, that's most people's idea of argumentation. <laughs> so, so yes, that that is what you and you know, I I think once once they do it a second, once they ignore you a second time, it's just I know how frustrating it is, but just you realize you're not going to get anywhere and just move on. I mean, I I can appreciate that you want to continue to ha do the outreach despite all this, which is great. Um, but maybe you should just pick, I don't know, maybe pick your battles a little more carefully. Well, At I least mean, the school like, is over. It's like one, it's one person for every like hundred people I engage in this manner. It's like, we're, but the war, but that one gets you the worst. Fucking. That, that one, that one drains more energy than the other 99, right? No, no. I'm saying I have like one success for all oh, one failures. success. Oh, like, yeah. you know, like we're, I, my fucking batting average is shit. Well, everybody oh, say quit the league. Everybody have about the average. same batting average. Everybody's and batting average. When it comes shit. to messages like ours, I'd say that, you know, what's the Bible reference? This kind of message is only for those with ears to hear. And you're just going to have to know, I guess, or kind of get a feel for early on where your effort is going to be worth putting into a certain person or not. Because some people, you can tell they have their minds made up and they're not really open. Oh, yeah, to of course. And that's when I just move on to people. But then when there's some that are kind of open to what I'm saying, then I put a little more effort into those people because they might actually be worth it. Yeah, it's just, my, fuck, it's a hard slog. 
Yeah, well, I, I, that's true for everybody. But fuck, is it Hart's law? Oh no, I, 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 yeah. well, that's why I'm trying to just think of it from your from like your perspective of like what you're dealing with, and that's why I'm saying like me because I, I imagine you know school's got to be you got to be taking a break for the for the summer soon, right? <laughs> so you may have supposedly, well, allegedly, at least, at least from school. So maybe you'll have maybe you'll have a little bit of a break where you won't have to think about that stuff as much going into these conversations. But also maybe maybe it would be helpful to just walk into those situations to just know to to try to shut off the law part of your brain because you just assume that nobody's going to know anywhere close to what you know about this stuff and maybe the conversations will go more smoothly if you just accept if you just accept on its face that they're going to pull shit like this if you want to continue <laughs> just like all right i have to deal and, with and, this. and i don't mean and i don't mean to make it sound like i'm a fucking you know high-end legal scholar i'm not i'm a fucking student but you know at the same time like where where my level of knowledge is compared to the level of knowledge of most of the people i talk to there's a significant difference that's not to say that i know everything but i know enough to know that the guys that are spouting off bullshit are spouting off bullshit like fu- fucking sovereign citizens man oh my oh, god i just want oh. those people make me want to shoot myself in the face yeah see those people you should definitely Fuck. avoid and I say that never fully studying law the way you did. I just studied New York state law enough back when I was taking criminal justice in college and became obsessed with like reading the penal code and learning all this crap and what was all these crazy laws we had here and this stuff. Like just with that amount of knowledge, I knew that I figured out that these people were full of shit after a while. Um, but just, actually just with that and uh, working knowledge of the constitution, I figured out how, how full of shit these people were. Um, and I, so I didn't have anywhere near your knowledge base. So I can imagine how frustrating it would be. Yeah. Just steer clear of those folks, man. Yeah. Sometimes nah. you just need to draw back from those kinds of people and spend a little bit of time with more like-minded people. And then you kind of, you know, get a little bit refreshed and able to go back out into it again. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's my rant. I'm I'm done. I'm I'm taking up the last little bit of our time, so I'll just that's I'll cut it right. off there. <laughs> hey, man, it's always, I'm a, I'm I'm the one who always rants around here. It's always good to get a rant from somebody else. So Shane, you got a rant in you, or you know, do we, or do we want to close out? I mean, you have the floor I think if you I'm got pretty something. Pretty rant free for tonight, actually. Oh, all right. Well, well, we'll we'll see if we can work you up for one next week or something. But all right. All right. So so on that note, yeah, we we probably should get closing out, but. All right, so this has been fun, guys. Uh, we uh, we took a we took a Trump conversation and, and turned it into a, a rant fest, and I'm happy with it. So I hope uh, everybody else enjoyed listening to this. So thank you, everybody who who did listen. And this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can still be found at solpodcast.org. And please go to if you haven't. Uh, please go to our Patreon page and consider donating to our Patreon. Uh, still only a dollar a month to access our once a week bonus shows. And uh, as we've mentioned the past couple of weeks, there are those additional levels for anybody who would like to donate a little more. I know we have a couple of people who are already up on the list with the additional bonus content of, you know, stuff like getting the shows right away and uh once dave actually comes back and finishes setting up the discord server we'll start doing our live shows and stuff and people will be invited there so yeah go check it out and uh you know it's only 12 bucks a year or like i've said plenty of times before hell even if you just want to throw a buck at us one month and try to listen to as many episodes as you can and stop paying after that at least you gave it a try so please consider doing that thank you everybody once again this has been the season liberty podcast and we'll catch you next time peace 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 Cell 411 is a great free app for Android and iPhone. It allows you to set up public and private cells for dealing with crime, emergencies, setting up neighborhood watch, activism, and even protecting your kids from bullies on the street or at school. Cell 411 gives your cells turn-by-turn directions to your location with one touch on your phone. There is also a Bluetooth panic button available that can be worn on your wrist, belt, or around your neck. 
Cell 411 has real-time chat for each alert so you can discuss the incident with family or friends in real-time video streaming. The video is stored on Cell 411's server so your evidence cannot be deleted if your phone is taken or destroyed. Cell 411 has decentralized ride sharing that allows for payment in any form – crypto, barter, silver, cash, etc. Cell 411 does not take a cut of your fare. Get Cell 411 free on Google Play and the iTunes Store or go to getcell411.com. That's getcell411.com.